This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and honey, who's shrunk, shrunk the Surface, right? It's pretty small. It's 10 inches. So we've seen the Microsoft Surface, the Surface 2, the Surface 3, and they were companions to the Pro models that were lower powered. In the old days, it was Surface RT. That was kind of a real failure. It couldn't run full Windows apps. We sort of have that situation, but not really here again, because our new friend, the Surface Grow, Go, runs Windows 10 in S mode, as they put it, if you do about this computer properties to find out. So you can switch it over to regular Windows 10 Home Edition, no S mode if you want. It's a switch using the built-in App Store on it. We'll talk about how you do that a bit. So I think the S mode is there, just like on the Surface Laptop, more probably for companies, and particularly schools, where they want to control the software load. So yes, you can load more than just App Store apps on this if you switch for free for a limited amount of time that's not specified yet by Microsoft to the full Windows 10 Home mode, which is pretty trippy on this little device that's 10 inches, 8.3 millimeters, not including the baby type cover here. That's a separate $129 spend if you want the Alcantara available in blue, burgundy, or platinum, or $99 if you go for a black, just faux suede finish. But anyway, yeah, it's 555 grams. It's 1.15 pounds. It's very portable. It has curved edges now, so it feels more tablet-like. We're going to look at it now. So the specs are on screen, so you can see them all. If you don't want to listen to me, list them all out. But the gist of it is 10-inch display, so quite a small device. The first Windows 10 tablets that we saw years ago with the launch of Windows 8, uh, there were 8-inch and there were 10-inch tablets, and then they gravitated towards the 12-inch and bigger size because those are more usable for an all-around computer. I would say clearly this is not des designed to be your only computer, unless schools are buying it, and Microsoft is trying to fight Chromebooks and iPads in the school, in which case it could be good for the wee kids in the middle school, the grade school, that sort of thing, as their only main computer. It's running on, and this is a dirty word, Pentium CPU among power users, among everyday people. You should know that the Pentium and the Celeron, which are names from years ago, still live on as the low performance, low power CPUs that sit below the Intel Core i5, even the Core M CPU. So this is not the sharpest knife in the draw. And in things, CPU benchmarks like Geekbench 4, it's about half the speed of a Surface Pro 2017 model, even running the Core M, which is the lowest performance model here. So if you're buying this and thinking that this is going to be just like the Surface Pro, only smaller in terms of performance, it is not. It's cheap for a Surface product, but it's not cheap, period. It's $399 for the base model. No matter which one you get, you're going to get that same 1.6 gigahertz Pentium Gold CPU, and there's no turbo boost there, so it's always going to be running just at 1.6 gigahertz, two cores, four threads. So you can get it with four gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of eMMC storage. eMMC means basically a permanently installed SD card or MMC card. So really slow storage. Trust me, this is going to be a painful thing. So unless you're buying it really just to stream video, you have a lot of patience, switching between programs, launching several programs, not going to be a whole lot of fun. Not to mention you're not going to have a lot of space left with the 64 gigs of storage because Windows is going to use up like half of that out of the box. The more exciting model is getting more expensive, though. It's $549, and that one gets you 8 gigs of RAM, which is pretty good by today's standards. I mean, an Ultrabook with 8 gigs of RAM is pretty viable, and 128 gig SSD, the real thing SSD, NVMe, in fact. Not the world's fastest NVMe that we've seen, but the speeds on it are actually pretty decent. That is the one I would recommend if you want to get one of these and you can afford it. But it doesn't end there price-wise, and this is how Surface goes, right? You know, the type cover, probably given the fact that Windows is still not a super finger-centric operating system, touch you know, friendly like uh, Android tablets or the iPad, that sort of thing, you're probably going to use this with a little bit more productivity in mind maybe because the keyboard makes life easier. That Surface type cover has been miniaturized, and it's still good. We'll talk a little bit more about that, but that's $129. So that's bringing up your spend. And if you want the $99 pen to go, to go with it, the Surface Pro pen, well, there you go. You're adding up a lot of money.
the whole shebang is going to run you $780 or $680 if you can live without the pen. And I realize not everybody is going to want the pen with this. So when you're thinking about that kind of price, you've already blown away the new standard iPad that supports the Apple Pencil in terms of pricing. Of course, you have to buy a keyboard for that one too. And if you're thinking about this or a laptop, you know, you can get a lot of pretty decent laptops, HP Envy's, Dell Inspirons, for about the same amount of cash. So you really have to want this nifty, cool design that Microsoft's counting on you liking because it is a popular design with the separable tablet with the pen input feature available. The cameras on this are certainly above average. As usual for Surface products, you have an 8 megapixel rear camera, a 5 megapixel front camera. You're going to look nice in Skype chats on this one. Both cameras can record 1080p video, and there's a Windows Hello camera up front, so you don't have to type in your password. Nice. The speakers on this are 2 watt speakers, and for a tablet that's 10 inches, they sound pretty good. It's not going to go filling a room and make you go wow, but they're not bad. You'll also probably really want to upgrade it to Windows 10 Home Full Edition, like I said, instead of running it in S mode. Now, ours out of the box was a retail version. It wasn't set up by Microsoft first, and it took a lot of updates. It took about an hour's worth of OS updates, firmware updates, and Windows Store updates before we could even think about switching editions of Windows because when we went to do that and you just go to your computer properties and you click on change product key, cancel out of the product key dialog, and then you can say switch to the full version of Windows and it says go to App Store and then it says your App Store isn't updated enough to update it enough to do this. So then you wait for all that to happen. Then it's very painless to do it. So you just basically you log into the store and you hit do it and it just flips a switch. There's no downloads, there's no waiting for that to happen. So that's pretty good. So that lets you run desktop programs. So you're not just stuck to Windows Store programs and the built-in programs like Microsoft Edge. If you want to run Chrome, for example, you can do it. If you want to install Photoshop, you can do it. This is a Microsoft Surface product. Even if it's less expensive than the other things that they make, this is still obviously when you look at a premium product. You've got that vapor magnesium casing. It's nice looking. You've got the same kickstand, works the same way with a nice level of resistance and goes almost all the way flat back like you would on the regular Surface Pro's 2017 model. It's it feels solid, it looks premium, and I do like the fact that they've rounded the edges a little bit. They're trying to make it feel more tablety and less angular. So Obviously, if you're something this small, you're probably going to hold it in your hands a lot. That's comfortable. The display on this is pretty good. It has Gorilla Glass 3, which isn't my favorite because it's a big glare pro. None of the Surface products, honestly, are particularly low glare, despite what they say about bonded glass and all that sort of thing. The resolution is pretty high. It's 1800 by 1200, but because of the scaling that's required to make Windows legible on a 10-inch display, you'll still get messages sometimes. I got an error message from Adobe Photoshop saying that you may not be able to see the entire window or dialog box because of the resolution and scaling on the device. Nothing much you can do about that. In terms of color accuracy, it's pretty darn good. It's not quite as good as the Surface Book 2 15-inch, but it's pretty close to the Surface Pro 2017 model. So you've got your full sRGB almost 99% close enough. You're 76% of Adobe RGB. Good contrast on this. It's a pleasing display. Unlike the higher end surface models where you have pre-calibrated displays on a little color switcher, this one comes out of the factory with none of those software options and it's a little too cool. It's not too off. Our color perimeter was able to fix it. Color accuracy on the display is pretty good. Touch works on it just fine other than the fact your touch targets are going to be very small on a 10 inch display. Again, this feels sort of like going back to Windows 8 and the 10 inch tablets that were a little annoying sometimes to use. Using the pen makes life easier obviously and it works very well with the pen. Microsoft has been improving the firmware that works with the Ntrig pens on all of their products, to be honest, and Tilt is working now pretty reliably as long as you're using a brush that supports Tilt or a program that supports Tilt. Windows' own built-in apps do support Tilt on it. Palm rejection is improved as well, so it makes a great little note-taker. When it comes to art, this does not have the brain power to do Photoshop seriously. If you're going to be using this as your digital sketch pad or you're an artist and you want something on the go, as small brushes are fine. They're okay. They work well. But any big brush, if you've got a 600 pixel brush and nothing too fancy, nothing that really bogged down a regular Surface Pro 2017 model, you will see lag beyond belief. So yes, you can run Photoshop. No, this is not the ideal candidate for it. But if you want to do something like ArtRage or Autodesk Sketchbook Pro, it's perfectly good with those lightweight apps. Sketchable, for example. Those are fine. So for hobby artists who are happy with those programs, it's good. 
One thing that is pretty cool, this is port constrained. That's not the cool part. You have one USB-C port, it's Gen 1. Okay, that's versatile at least, but it's the only one. You have a headphone jack. As usual service products, you have a micro SD card slot underneath the kickstand flap, and the kickstand is just like the big Surface Pro in all of its glory. But you've got the Surface Connect. So that means that you can use a variety of Surface peripherals. So you can use the Surface Dock, for example. So we actually did this. I plugged this in, plugged in a 4K monitor, Ethernet, the whole shebang, mouse, and it works, which is pretty darn neat for something that's relatively, for a Microsoft Surface product, affordable and pretty darn small. Yeah. For those of you who are wondering about the keyboard connector, the Pogo Pin connector, this is not compatible with the bigger Surface Pro keyboard, the type cover on it. There's actually more pogo pins on the smaller one and the little locator notches are in different places so it won't physically connect up. So you are going to have to buy the smaller type cover. No cheating to get that bigger cover and save money or have more typing space. When it comes to that keyboard, you know I love the regular Surface Pro type covers. Really, I do. I find the travel's pretty good at 1.4 millimeters. The backlighting is nice on it. It works. This one is pretty small. This is going back to your netbook generation kind of feel. There's not a lot of room here. If you have thick fingers and even if you have skinny long fingers like I do, it's not the most comfortable thing. They've also tried to make it thinner, so they've reduced the travel to one millimeter, so there's not a lot of travel. The trackpad on it is pretty good, and it does have backlighting three stages of white backlighting. Microsoft claims up to nine hours of battery life. It's optimistic. It has a 26 watt hour two cell battery that is sealed inside. It is glued to the casing. This is another one of those Surface products where you basically you're going to have to use a heat gun and lift the display out of the casing. It's not something you're going to do. You're really going to send this off to be serviced. Anyway, the battery life on this, I found that it, it, Obviously, it's going to depend on what you're doing, but with the average probably intended light to moderate use, like note taking, some MS Office, streaming some videos, it, it runs about seven to seven and a half hours on the charge. So it ships with a super compact little charger, cute thing that it is, and that uses the Surface Connect connector so that it keeps your USB-C port free. But should you like to charge it with USB-C, you can do that. We tested it and it worked. Schwing. So who is this product for and how does it stand against the competition? Who is it for? That's a good question. If you're excited about it, it's for you. If you're going ho-hum, well, obviously not. It's a niche product and Microsoft has never done so well with their more affordable, less expensive Surface non-pro model. So we'll see how this one does. The fact that it is compatible with desktop programs is certainly an improvement over the Windows RT versions of old, those small screen ones. But Probably it's for those of you who are thinking about an Android tablet or an iPad and you want to run Windows. You, you have some Windows programs that you're fond of or you need to use and you find that tempting. If you're happy to use MS Office on the iPad, if you're happy to use Office Suites on an Android tablet with an accessory keyboard, honestly, those are still going to be the easiest. You just turn them on, you start working. There's no Windows updates, there's no worrying about viruses, all of those usual kind of things. They also will feel faster than this too. Because of this Pentium CPU, which isn't like the best CPU that you can get by a far margin, it's pretty slow, I, it's easy to bog this down. Whereas obviously anybody who's using an Android tablet or an iPad knows that you'll rarely see those bogged down and they can do most of the same things, streaming video, office work, even some WordPress blogging kind of things, even some photo editing, all that sort of thing. So Microsoft actually has some competition as they keep trying to break back into that tablet market. The other obvious competition is Windows laptops that are in the five to seven hundred and fifty dollar range because that's where you're at after you buy the accessories for this. Now it'll be harder to find ones that support the pen in that price range. So if the pen's a selling point for you, obviously not so much. But if you just want a relatively affordable, nice looking laptop, there are products out there like the HP Envy models, the Dell Inspiron models that you can get for about the same price with bigger screens, more functionality, not going to fit in your back pocket exactly though. So there it is, the Surface Go, one itsy bitsy service. And like I said, Microsoft's not in the business of making things that are really great bargains in terms of pricing, right? You know, so this thing is not the sharpest knife in the drawer. Like I said, half the brains of a regular Surface Pro Core M even, but it is portable, it is light, it does get you full windows. And it, for those of you who are buying this or something like note taking, light use, like MS Office, you're streaming video on it, that sort of thing. Sketching, but not so much in Photoshop. Like I said, performance not so good there, but sketching in Art Rage or Autodesk products, that sort of thing. Yeah, it's fine for that. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.